Hello everyone, it's Carrie, and in today's video I'm working on part two of my Death Becomes Her set, and I'll be working on Meryl Streep's character. I'll be showing you how I sculpted the neck, made the gun, and her face up. Stay tuned to the end to see final photos of Meryl and the set of her and Goldie together. So to get started, I painted the scalp an ivory color, and I'm rooting her with some blonde Caden Kalan hair. So to get started on the neck, I'm using some polymer clay in this peachy uh, or light ivory color. I wanted to match the skin tone the best I could with the clay, so I didn't use my epoxy sculpt, which the kind that I have is in gray. I probably would have used that if I had white, so it would have been easier to blend it into her skin tone, but I didn't have that, so I chose this color so I could not have to paint it and risk chipping. So if I use a color that's closer to her skin, then I can just use some pastels and it'll be safer and, and more durable. So I just rolled out a tube and wrapped it around in a spiral, and then I'm just sculpting it to make it look like it's twisted. This kind of clay, it's polymer clay, I think it's by Sculpey, and it's called Living Doll. I'll see if I can put a link to the where I purchased the Living Doll Sculpey in the description box below. So to heat that up or bake it, I've covered up the rest of the doll with some cloth and I'm just carefully uh, heating it up in small increments so I don't burn the rest of the doll while doing that. I don't want to put the whole doll in the oven obviously because that would make some cause a lot of damage. So onto the gun, what I'm using is these, uh, they're these uh, lollipop sticks that I get in the baking section of a craft store and I use them for a lot of different projects because they're lightweight and they're easily, more easy for the doll to hold. So I just use some craft glue to glue them together and then wrapping them with some washi tape. Then I'm just gonna use a clip to hold them together while it dries and I'm gonna work on the handle of the gun with some uh, fun foam and warbler. or actually it's not fun foam, I chose a piece of cardboard for the inside of the um, of the handle to make give it a little bit of dimension and then put the warbler around it. And then once that was cooled, I created a little bit of a notch in the lollipop sticks and adhered the handle with some hot glue or some super glue. And so adding some little bits for the details, there was the finished gun. And then I did the same, used the same products for the shovel that I did for Goldie. Now onto the face up. So 
The doll I chose, I, I want to say it was a Michelle Mermaid, but looking at it, I'm not sure. It was a, obviously an Ever After High doll, and I think it was one of the newer versions. I thought it would match her face the best. I did do a little bit of heating to the nose to make it a little bit skinnier. I heated it up with a heat gun and then kind of pinched it a little bit just to make it look a little bit more like Meryl's nose. If you're a supporter over on Patreon, there's a close-up video of how I create a waterline and tear duct. It's filmed in real time while I talk through it, and it's available for you there now. There's also a video there on how I make my own eyelashes for the festival level and above supporters. So I went in and did the highlights first. It went kind of heavy, obviously, on the forehead, cheeks, nose, and chin. Just using a reference photo to, to kind of eyeball where the highlights belong. And then I'm going back with a combination of a couple of different pan pastel colors that I made to do the shading. And obviously I'm using some reference photos on my phone over there to the left. <laughs> As always, the supplies that I use are in the description box below, along with affiliate links to where you can purchase those, and we get a small commission for purchases made through those links, whether it's the product that you clicked on or not. So much appreciated when you guys do that. This particular set was a commission, and at this time I am closed for commissions for May and part of June while I prepare for the convention that I'm doing in June, but after, after mid-June I'll be reopening commissions. I already have two on the books for then, but then I'll uh, reopen, so let me know by emailing me or contacting me directly on social media if you're interested in a commission. So I'm giving her some eyeshadow with this uh, FX Pearl FX shimmer powder in a copper color. As I'm watching this, I'm really surprised that I went so heavy on the highlights, but I was really happy. I'm not sure why I was doing it, to be honest, um, but I was really happy with the results. So I guess it worked. I'm just surprised that I did so much highlighting. I mean, all over her face. Very interesting. I guess it was just what I was seeing in the reference photos. So I'm pulling out my Derwent Soft Pastels and using some red for her lips. I 
I would normally use my pan pastels, uh, but I wanted this particular color. I'm using a couple of different yellows and browns to make her eyebrows and with the again the pan pastel by the way I've received many questions for my Q&A video so that'll be coming out soon I'm I've worked to put them together and prepare some answers so in the next a uh, couple of videos you should see that coming soon. I'm also doing a an Arteza review and giveaway so stay tuned for those videos and um, just working hard to get that out to you guys. Also if you have a chance to check out my new pa Patreon rewards please do so. I've worked really hard to give add, add a lot of value to those and try to give my viewers and supporters what you guys are looking for in Patreon. So um, added a bunch of new tier tiers with my May relaunch and I'm really excited about those. It's all geared towards teaching you my techniques. So check those out. There's a link in the description box. This is my favorite part going in with some highlighting um, with the white watercolor pencil. onto her beautiful blue eyes. So Meryl Streep has these icy blue eyes, and uh, I wanted so I wanted to make the outline of them darker, and then the inside of the eye be very pale blue, very very pale. So I keep blending it out, adding color, and blending it out with white. Trying my best to keep the pupils the same size without making them too large. Because she's supposed to be surprised or shocked. When you make a larger pupil, it tends to make it look more innocent. And I don't think she's innocent in this movie. <laughs> I'm adding some shading to the up under the upper lid and then I'll add some highlights adding some highlights with pan pastel but then I'll also add some highlights in her 
pupils and iris area. And once I do that, I'll seal her about five times with Mr. Super Clear UV Cut Flat, and then I'll give her some gloss on her eyes and lips. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.